of the things I've learned over these last couple of years as I've been involved with Miles for Memories is that memories become so much more precious when memories are all we have left. About three years ago, some of you might know that my mother passed away from complications from lymphoma. And as we were sitting in the funeral home, the funeral director asked us who was going to be in charge of making sure that everything came out the way it was supposed to. I, in my wisdom, point to my dad. And at that very moment, I realized that my dad, my brother, my husband, and my sister are all pointing at me. Well, that sort of, I think, gave me the opportunity to turn things into the what my mother would have loved best. My mother's life was all about taking pictures. She wasn't just about taking a picture of a tree or a flower, but every picture she took, there had to be a person in it. Because that gave perspective. You could see a yellow daffodil 17 times and not know that that was the first one that was ever planted and I was two. And then see it come back again when I was five and look at the field of them that they had by the time I was 18. So you had to have a person in that picture. When she passed away, my dad let me know that he had some pictures that we could pick from as we decided what we were going to put there. And I said, OK. We got to his home, and what I found was there was a bin of photos with my name on it. There was a bin of photos with my brother's name on it. There was a bin of photos with my sister's name on it. All of the grandkids, the brothers, the sisters, the uncles, the family as a whole, you name it. And there were tubs upon tubs upon tubs of photos. We packed them all into three cars and took them to my house, laid them out all over the place to pick out just the right ones. And my husband and my son and my daughter gratefully scanned them all, fixed what they could, created a collection of a video that could be run during uh, the service as well as at the visitation. And then, of course, we had additional photos that were added because of ones that relatives also had. And it was just a wonderful collection. But one of the things I found really interesting in the process of going through my bin was that inside there was a journal. I was curious. But now wasn't really the time. I did kind of open it a little bit, going, hmm, should I read it? Should I not? It's in my bin. I don't know. So uh, we set it aside. The night after the funeral, I couldn't sleep. Some of you may have experienced similar things. That journal was on my mind. I went back to the room with the journal and opened it randomly to find the story about when I was in high school and we switched schools and I was having an interesting time adjusting. I was excited one day because I came home and I had been chosen to be one of those students to go on a foreign exchange program to France. I asked my mom with my levels of excitement that you're not quite seeing yet if I could go. I said all I have to do is sell a whole bunch of tattoo holes and then I will make my way through this process. Well, according to the journal, she said yes quickly because she never expected me to sell that many Tootsie Rolls. I did. Yes. All right. So going on and reading further into the journal, I also found out that she was apprehensive about me going, and yet she was very excited about me going. She was nervous and yet gleeful. She was having a, a level of emotional um, cacophony, maybe that's a good word for that, that uh, I hadn't ever realized. What she didn't know about that trip that she was super excited about was that I nearly got arrested because we strayed onto a military base. I nearly got stranded on an island when the uh, water tide was starting to go out. And just a couple of days before we were getting ready to go home, somebody decided they needed my wallet more than I did. They had stolen all of the money I had left. All of my identification was in that wallet. The keys to my flat were in that wallet. And frankly, once I figured out it wasn't one of the students that was with us that had taken it, 
That was probably the most restless night that I had ever had. I didn't know if they were going to figure out how to get into my hotel room or my flat. I didn't know if they even cared. But then I didn't know how to call my mom and say, I'm not coming home. Yeah. Or send money, please. So I decided to sleep on it, fret all night long. The very next morning, our school group was uh, planning on going to Brussels, Belgium for the chocolate factory. Now, who wouldn't be cheered by chocolate, right? Yes, well, I was, of course. So we get on the train, and we're getting ready to go. And in my seat is a camera case. Now, I was getting pretty good at French by now. And so I tried to explain to the conductor that this camera was in my seat. And he shook his head and very respectfully said back, no, you keep it. I'm thinking, OK, I've got something wrong. There's a verb wrong here. I'm not really sure what's going on. So I try again. After three attempts, I finally go, hmm, I'm getting a teacher. So I went to go get the teacher, asked her to explain it. She explains it to him, I'm sure, in flawless French. And he comes over and grabs my hand and walks me to the front of the train. He pulls open this wonderful little drawer, and in this drawer is a collection of cameras. Big ones, little ones, really expensive ones, probably ones that cost five bucks, but there's a lot of cameras in there. And he turns to me and says in most perfect English, if they come back, I'll give them a better one. <laughs> huh. Feeling a wee bit defeated in this whole process, I walk back to my seat, and I decide I'm going to investigate my new camera case. I open up that camera case, and what do I find? Yeah, there's a camera in there. But there's also nearly the exact same amount of money that was stolen the day before. I was quite speechless at the moment. And the person who was sitting next to me had lost her ticket. There was enough extra money to pay for her ticket, which I did, so she got to stay on the train with us and travel all the way to Brussels. As part of that process, boy, did I learn a few things. As I continue reading in my mother's journal, one of the things that I find out is that she is super excited about this experience that I've now had, my ability to go ahead and travel to a world that she's never been to. And she's so complimentary of the ways that she thinks that I am now growing and developing into this great, wonderful kid. And it's really cool to read. Not that she didn't say nice things to me and heartfelt things when she was with us, but to read the way she wrote them down is precious. I came to find that that book was really in my bin because it was my stories from her perspective. I got to see how she felt when I switched schools. I got to see the joy that she felt when I accomplished different things and I got into college and I moved on into different directions. The joy that she felt, the sorrow, the tears, the excitement, the fears. And at the very end of that journal, and I might add, there's a lot of them. Everybody got one. I only read my own, and I promise. So at the end of my book, the end of my journal, there is a picture of me coming off of the plane with the camera around my neck. And it says, when I grow up, I want to be just like her. <laughs>